Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to have you back here. Uh, so, there's a very interesting question which I keep getting. It's related to synastry. So, synastry is generally seen uh, more in a Western context, you know, in Western astrology. But nowadays, even uh, Vedic astrologers are using it. Of course, uh, uh, nothing wrong in, in using it, but in Vedic astrology, we have something uh, in the similar lines. Okay, it's not exactly synastry, but it is like Gun Milan, as they say. <clears throat> so, uh, what is exactly synastry, and, and uh, what are some of the parameters that uh, we should take into consideration uh, astrologically? Okay, so, but before that, we have to understand what exactly is synastry. It's like uh, trying to see how. How well two people will be able to stay with each other okay now there could be different definitions uh, but at the end the the goal is to keep two people together that's the end goal okay uh, so the thing is uh, whenever you are doing synastry you you have to understand certain parameters you have to find from the chart uh, the non-negotiables okay so in in every person there are two things one is a category of things which are non-negotiable which he or she cannot uh, live without in himself and also in the other person okay so for example uh, I, I know many people who are like uh, vegetarians and vegans and they say oh when, when I'm looking for a partner I would want that uh, he or she is also a vegan which, which is actually good because uh, then uh, you will not find much difficulty in you know eating in the same place okay so this is something but sometimes you know there could be a vegetarian who may say oh, okay uh, i'm okay if my partner eats non-veg you know I, i'm fine with it so <clears throat> that means that that is non-negotiable for that person but the person is not uh, putting that criteria onto the spouse okay but sometimes they may put, sometimes they may, they may not. So uh, that is something which you have to check. Now, how do you check the non-negotiable? So uh, uh, that you cannot just find out from, you know, like one or two placements. Okay, like uh, people say, oh, this plant, that plant. No, it, it, you can't find out. You have to <coughs> you have to do a comprehensive analysis and you have to find out. So, for example, uh, you, you can see uh, the things which a person uh, very prominently emphasizes or focuses on or prioritizes by seeing the lagna lord the uh, sun the moon you know and planets in the ascendant these four things will tell you you know what the person prioritizes so once you know that uh, these four things are something which the person is uh, not ready to negotiate then <coughs> You have to see, uh, is this person uh, having that criteria for the spouse also or is it just within himself, okay? Like sometimes some people say, oh, I, I don't drink but I'm okay with uh, my partner drinking once in a while. You know? <clears throat> Somebody may say, no, I don't drink and I want my partner also uh, that he or she shouldn't drink. <clears throat> so then, then you know this is something not just to oneself but also uh, something which he or she is expecting from uh, the other party <clears throat> then you have to see if that determination is there in the other chart okay so for example if a person uh, has combinations or you know like yogas which indicate that uh, he or she might be indulging in drinking uh, the spouse uh, then then uh, if that is a non-negotiable for this person then the marriage may break because uh, the the other person may say oh I, I i i was very clear from day one that you know you cannot drink or whatever i mean people have all sorts of criterias <coughs> but if the person says oh no it it's okay but don't drink beyond a certain extent or whatever i mean no no level of drinking is recommended but uh, if that is what the person says you know a bit of drinking is fine then maybe uh, you can say okay now the partner's chart says okay they may drink once in a while and of course it's not very easy to find how frequently they will drink but uh, you can get an idea you know if the eighth house is very prominent and you know there is some uh, level of depression indicated 
uh, some level of sadness or some level of headlessness indicated then people uh, generally they have a tendency to drink more during these bad periods okay but the thing is uh, once you figure out this uh, you see the potential in the other person's chart okay so that's the first thing you know the non-negotiables then comes the likes and dislikes you know interests conflicting interests like i know many marriages which break because of money because uh, one person is a miser another is a spendthrift okay so this this is something which is very interesting because i have also found so many couple equally like may not be 50 50 but almost equal number of couples who say oh actually uh, our relationship is good you know because i save money and she spends or the or they say oh i i save money uh, you know i spend money and my uh, husband or wife saves money okay <coughs> so this could be complementary uh, and this could result in like you know good relationships or if it goes the other way around this could lead to divorce okay <coughs> so we have to find uh, we have to find in both the charts if if there are certain differences which will be there inevitably to what extent to what extent is a person is the person are both the people are ready to understand that oh actually these are not you know like uh, conflicting interests they are complementary interests okay like one person may say i like spicy food the other person may say no i like uh, normal non-spicy food now this can be good sometimes because if a person eats spicy all the time you know then both the people are eating spicy you know then their rajogun will increase you know they will have more fights you know they, they will uh, be more animalistic at times that will increase the pitta dosh in the body uh, but sometimes it may be good you know uh, they, they may have uh, they may go to the same restaurants you know they may love to eat and explore you know so that could be good in one sense okay i mean from a materialistic perspective okay uh, but is the person ready to tolerate that the other person is not liking spicy food okay uh, or in terms of anything you know sometimes one of the person is very creative and the other is very intellectually oriented so it could be a very good match sometimes one is a creative another is intellectual now primarily okay everybody is an intellectual and creative to some extent but primarily who are you or i have seen you know like uh, this uh, this problem you know causing divorces you know like breaking marriages uh, because the spouse uh, every, every person feels you know he doesn't understand me she doesn't understand me or some or they have a disconnect okay it's like miscommunication or lack of empathy apathy towards each other you know so lack of understanding and lack of care for each other and oh why should you think emotionally or creatively why should you think intellectually always okay <clears throat> so as i said i have seen examples where these things can work complementarily or they can sometimes uh, go to extreme cases okay and especially if a planet is linked with the sixth house you have to pay very close attention to it in both the charts okay so because a planet in the sixth can lead to separation now the planet in the sixth will tell you what are the traits which can you know somehow cause separation and that's like you, you might get an idea of what kind of um, fights could cause separation so you know like uh, if the ninth lord is in the sixth sometimes you know i have always observed that uh, there are fights on the basis of principles you know like oh i i'm very principled according to me this is right you know you did something else so i must stay with you <coughs> or it could be the other way around you know like uh, if the seventh lord is in the sixth then the person uh, may not like the spouse's interference all the time and the person might like independence okay and especially if the lagna lord is also there in the sixth so more than the seventh house you should check the sixth house when it comes to synastry and then later after doing all this you can check you know like uh, what is the difference between like as they always keep doing this you know like mars 
Mars to the Venus of the other person, how many houses is it? Okay, or the other way around. So those those things are fine. You can check. You know how far is uh, the wife's uh, moon from the husband's sun, or the other way around. You know, you can check all this. But if you do not check their non-negotiables and their complementary differences or separating differences, you know, then your uh, you you will be in a very uh, serious predicament because you will tell that okay i th i think you can marry you know you can go and marry <laughs> but then they get married and then there's divorce within three months okay because they are completely different individuals and they can't stay so when you are doing synastry do not forget the trines because if there are good planets in the trines you know if natural benefits or uh, like kendra lords you know if there is a raj yoga or something like that then the person has a greater potential to uh, accept differences in relationships okay otherwise if the lords of dusthanas are in trines the person is very rigid and uh, does not have the maturity to understand when he should apply which rule and when he should not apply okay this is like uh, a person is not very mature so he will see some difference with his wife and he will say oh i can't stay with you let's get divorced okay yeah it might sound very funny but uh, that's how it is that's how people are these days unfortunately you know one thing happens and they blow it up you know like as they say love at first sight and divorce at first fight <laughs> okay so whenever you are doing synastry please take into consideration all these factors and only then go and do the traditional you know all this standard uh things like you know mars venus sun moon and all this otherwise I see people, they take two charts and they say, oh, my Mars, uh, sorry, my, the girl says, you know, his Mars is here, my Venus is here. So his Mars and my Venus, they are in Kendra to each other. So is it good? But have you checked the Ascendant? Have you checked the Ascendant Lord? Have you checked the Sun, the Moon? Have you checked, you know, the Atma Karaka? Have you checked the overall chart? What does the person prioritize? What is the person missing in life? And what is the person looking in life? Okay so if that is something which you have not done then this uh, running around number of houses from each other's planets this doesn't work okay and that is why most of the synastries they fail most of the times uh, all this good milan and all this nonsense it fails why because they just look at things in isolation they do not do a comprehensive analysis and they do not analyze the overall chart if you don't do this it will uh, your predictions will end in a disaster because every chart is different just because the girl has her venus in kendra to the boy's mars does it mean that you know they will have a good marriage uh, well not necessarily if the thought process does not match uh, even if they are attracted to each other physically because of this you know so called mars venus you know to to each other in kendra or trines but uh, if they are not uh, having mental compatibility then they will have a very uh, good physical life you know for the first three months they will be infatuated with each other and then they'll be bored and then they'll understand ah we are good as uh, animals but we can't be good as humans right <laughs> okay so then this is the problem you see so that is why many marriages are ending in like you know divorce and separation because there's no mental thought process is not matching you know this is not matching that is not matching you know oh he's like this she's like this ah always okay <laughs> so therefore if you want that these things do not happen in your life you know if you are unmarried and you want to marry or you are giving consultation to somebody you know in regards to all this then please make sure that you do proper synastry and along with that before synastry or ideally which is like a part of the synastry you analyze both the charts if you don't do that then uh, you people will remember you for very long <laughs> all right thank you so much for your patience if you are new to the channel please subscribe to it down below and if you liked this video please click the thumbs up and share with somebody who is wanting to get a synastry uh, understanding with their partner okay and yes, if you want a consultation from me, my website is also down below in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him. Thank you.